Okay, so let's get some practice with tables and other stuff we've learned. And we're going to do an example of using tables to format some stuff on your page. So let's start with a heading tag. So we're going to make a registration page. Okay, I have this saved as tableform.html. I have it here in my browser and it says register. All right, so we're going to make a standard registration form, first name, last name, email address, uh, password, submit. So the way that we would do that, uh, that we have before, is that we're going to have a form, method equals post, action equals, and just copy and paste in that URL that I gave you before. Okay, and then we'll put in our end form tag. And then we want to add our input tags for each thing the person is going to tell us. So we're going to have input type equals text. The first field will be their name. So we'll do the very confusing name equals name. And let's put a label at the beginning of each one. So we have name, email, input type equals text. name equals email. And remember, the name attribute is the name of this field. It's describing the type of data that they're giving us. So name, email, password. We'll do input type equals password. And then name equals, we'll call this PW1. And then we'll say verify password and we'll have them type in the password again. Now, we don't know how to actually check that these two values are the same. That's something you would use JavaScript for, which again, I have a one credit JavaScript class if you wanna learn how to do that. For now, we'll just assume that's something that we'll handle elsewhere. So name, email, password, verify the password, uh, and then a submit button. Input, type equals submit, and for value, that's the text that'll be on the button. I'll have it say register. All right, so I didn't do any formatting here, so this is all gonna show up in one ugly row. Uh, but even if I added it in, it gets a little bit ragged, so um, don't bother doing this because we're gonna delete it in one second. But if I put a line break at the end of each of these lines and reloaded, you know, it's not all lined up, uh, that is really bothersome. It doesn't look very professional. And so what we're going to do is use a table. So the first column will have this little descriptive text that we have, and the second column will have the input fields. So we'll get rid of those BRs that I just added. And we want to put a table around this. Okay, so we're going to do that just like the example that we did before. We're going to have a table tag, and we'll put in our end table tag at the end. And then each of these lines here will be a row in the table. So let's start and we'll just put a TR tag at the beginning of each line. And we'll do the end TR tag at the end of each line. In fact, I'm gonna put that on a separate line so we get a little space here. All right, so we have TR and then we've got this stuff that's going to go inside and then our end TR. Now we can't just have it like this because remember all the data has to be in cells. It can't just be in a row. There's no such thing as being in a row without being in a cell. So we have to add the cells. We're going to have one cell around this descriptive text and another cell around the field. So I'm going to do it again a little formatting. We're going to have the TD tag and I'm going to put that in front of each of our descriptors here and I'm doing a little bit of indenting and moving just so it looks nice all right so that starts a cell for each thing then I'm gonna end that TD tag after the descriptor and I'm just copying and pasting I'm gonna put one here but we will have to come back because we only have one cell in this last row then for our input tags, I'm gonna do the same thing. Start a TD in front of them. And end the TD after each one. 
All right, so now if we look at our table, which starts here and goes all the way to the bottom, we have a table row with one cell and then a second cell, end of the row. A new table row, one cell and a second cell, and it ends. And we want to make sure that we've got all that, have all of our TD tags and our end TDs matched, all of our TRs and our end TRs matched. So that looks good for everything, except for this last row, we only have one TD. We don't have a second one. Uh, and it doesn't make sense to have a second one. So we can do call span equals two. So this bottom cell will go across both. Okay, so hopefully that'll work. If we come here and reload, there we go. Looks really nice, right? Um, we have all of our uh, input fields lined up. And if I click register, oh, I have a mistake here and I'm gonna let you guys see this mistake. Um, so you can see it's going to file colon slash slash and it's got a bunch of stuff and then zaphod.cs with our reflector. Uh, I know that this means I'm probably missing the HTTP in front of that URL. So if we come back here, you can see I'm missing it. That's a mistake I told you guys some of you will make and I make them too. All right, so let's go back, we'll reload enter our password again, try it one more time, and there we go, and now we can see all of our data. Okay, so that's one way that you can use tables along with other things that we've seen to make some pretty nice formatting on your page. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use tables to format the entire page, which as I've said, has fallen a little bit out of favor with people who really adhere to the web guidelines, though it's not uncommon to see it. So for now, this is a great and widely accepted way that you can use tables to format data that shows up on your page, in this case, information in a form.